I want you to cast your minds back now. September the 3rd, 1939. The last minutes of peace were ticking away and my father and I and my brother were watching my mother digging an air raid shelter. <laughs> She's a great little woman, said father, and getting smaller all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just then, a man called Neville Chamberlain, who did Prime Minister impressions, <laughs> he spoke on the wireless, and he said, We have not heard from Mr. Hitler. So, as from 11 o'clock today, we are at war with Germany. I love that we <laughs> Spontaneous bursts of applause. It was a great day for the Milligan family when two military policemen dragged me screaming from the house, <laughs> took me to Victoria Station and put me on the train for Becks Hill, which I was to discover was an above ground cemetery. <laughs> they didn't bury the dead there. They put them on street duties. <laughs> At Becks Hill, I got out. It wasn't easy. The train didn't stop there. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped off and I was catapulted to the feet of a sergeant major with a face like Tommy Cooper's upside down. <laughs> 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 He screwed up his eyes, teeth, and ears and said to me, You are not Minigan, are you? <laughs> now, I could have given him one of a thousand names like a bloody fool. I said, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Well then. <laughs> Off to the headquarters. Attention. Kick. Right. Left. Left, I said, yes. I said, wait a minute, what about the other leg? <laughs> I didn't want to join a one-legged regiment. <laughs> and I've got nothing against one-legged soldiers, but then neither have they. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was marched into a battery office which contained a table on which were three paper clips. On the wall was a picture of a woman with big tits. <laughs> Captioned, join the Navy and see the world. <laughs> then, <laughs> an officer wearing a World War II uniform over a World War I body <laughs> <laughs> he spoke, uh, what your name, my man? I said, Spike Milligan, sir. Silence when you speak to an officer, <laughs> said the sergeant. Now, Milligan, now, where are you from? London, sir. Uh, which part? All of me. <laughs> The first thing you find out in the matters in the army is food. <laughs> At mealtimes, there was a duty officer present who was informed what the dish of the day was. In this case, it was sausages. The cook called out, Duty officer present, eat to your attention. And the officer came walking past and said, Any complaints? 
gunner next to me said, me? No, and what have you got? Gunner said, I've got piles. <laughs> That's funny, said the officer. Everybody else has got sausages. <laughs> Next, I had to go to the M.O. Take your clothes off, he said. Oh, don't you want to take me out to dinner or something? <laughs> How long has it been like that? I said, that's as long as it's ever been. small dance band and played the trumpet. At one dance, a soldier came up to me and ripped open his battle dress jacket, pointed to a wound and said, Dunkirk! So I lowered my trousers <laughs> and showed him my appendicitis scar and I said, Lucian General Hospital! <laughs> uh, I remember, remember once we were playing at a dance. A rather well-dressed officer came up to me and said, Look, uh, uh, Bombardier, it's my wife and I first anniversary. Do you pay requests? I said, Yes. What would you like? He said, Oh, uh, anything. <laughs> Before, <laughs> before long, we went overseas at the request of the women of Bexhill. <laughs> couldn't stand the pressure any longer. We went on board the SS Otranto, a sturdy ship with a slight tendency to sink. <laughs> and we wondered why the crew all slept in the lifeboats. <laughs> anyway, the first day in action, Gunnar Shapiro and I were detailed to run a telephone wire up a hill to an OP. OP. We got about halfway up and suddenly mortars commenced and we, as we got near the top, increased in density. After one particularly loud blast, Shapiro turned to me and said, are we insured against this sort of thing? <laughs> we were gradually winning the war. And I had to take a, a Lieutenant Bowman Smythe and his pipe in my Bren carrier to look for a new OP. And as we drove along, we came to an area that seemed remarkably quiet, very uncomfortable. The Lieutenant and his pipe got out and started looking at his maps to fix a new position. I heard something behind me. I turned around and there were three German paratroopers standing with their hands up. Bowman Smythe said, what's going on there? I said, there are three German paratroopers here, sir. He said, well, ask them what they want. <laughs> I said, they, they want to become prisoners of war, sir. But, well, tell them we haven't got the facility. I said, I said, I'm sorry, sir, I, I don't speak German. He said, come here, take these maps. He, he went over these German paratroopers and went as like chickens. He went, choo! <laughs> well, now you know how the war took so long for one day, we were told to withdraw as German troops were infiltrating in the night. I went out to return to the gun position, which had all the guns on their way out across the fields. And with the, all that was left for me was this Bren carrier. So I threw my stuff on it. I turned around, and on the hill behind me, 
there was what appeared to be American helmets. So I shouted, don't shoot, British. Whereupon there was an absolute storm of firing. <laughs> there were German paratroopers. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll, I'll, I'll stop the show here a while, because apropos of that occasion, uh, there's a German who came over here during the war was take, taken prisoner. His name is Hans Tesk. And he read one of my war books, and uh, he suddenly realized that he had been one of these paratroopers shooting at me. So he wrote to me and told me, and I thought, I must take him out to lunch, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a, a wonderful lunch like this, and at the end of it, I said, look, Hans, you must autograph my menu. He said, of course, Spike. And he said, dear Spike, sorry I missed you on February <laughs> Would you like to stand up, Hans? Oh, there, there he is. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> when, when victory came in Tunis, we were given a, a week's leave in Tunis under Sergeant Bullock. And he took us through the streets in Tunis and said, you should, you, you should stick with me. And uh, I will find you a very good restaurant. <laughs> so we were pretty naive. We said, oh, all right, so it's fine. So we, we came to one. He said, this one here is good ones. He said, how do you know that? See, he's got knives and forks on the table. <laughs> so we all, we all went inside. We all went inside, and he said to the waiter, Earths, Avic chips, cat, tom. <laughs> the waiter said, it's all right that I speak English. Would you like any particular wine? He said, yes. Yes, any particular wine. <laughs> <laughs> the war came to an end sometime in the middle of the 70s. <laughs> And after the war, I wrote the goons and apparently died. <laughs> <laughs>